Who's now? that? For a new one. <laughs> no, are they? You know, so, but oh did you audition to be Doctor Who? I right? think it should be a girl. They've had enough guys. I think it should be a girl. Yeah. I, I, uh, Woo! Woo! I know. Woo! I know. Well, you could be the sidekick then. Yeah, I could be the sidekick. Exactly. Absolutely. No problem. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> um, I, I, I sort of did. Um, uh, there was a time that Amblin Pictures, which is Steven yeah. Spielberg's uh, company, had bought the rights. They, uh, they did, I think they did a they pilot. Did a Paul McGann. Paul McGann, yeah. yeah. So I was over uh, doing a movie uh, called A Little Princess. Uh, Alfonso, oh Alfonso my God. Born. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yes. Yeah, we talked yeah. to you. I talked to you about that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I did this gorgeous, uh, this movie, and... I'd also done another movie called The War of the Buttons for, for Warners and, and somebody had sent some tapes, there was some interest in me for this. Somebody had sent some outtakes with me messing with the kids and all that. I didn't know they were filming. So I got called in by Spielberg's people. Uh, again, naive, oh yeah, I, I haven't told anybody this. I, when I went for the meeting, this is absolutely true, I was invited over and as things happened on, on set, I was filming at the time and my schedule changed so I was supposed to go over and meet this guy. Uh, it was the guy who, does anybody remember Max Headroom? Do you remember Max Headroom? Peter, the English guy, really lovely guy. And he was kind of involved in this setting up um, Doctor Who for Amblin. So I, uh, I was supposed to go for a meeting. They changed my schedule. We canceled the meeting uh, with, with the executives at, at Amblin. I went uh, back to film and they, they canceled the reschedule. So basically, if, so I became free again. So, uh, I just uh, strolled up to the offices. I got a pass through into Universal. The Amblin offices used to be in the Universal. This is in Hollywood, in uh, Burbank. And I basically knocked at the door of Amblin and said, uh, listen, I, I can make it now. But you, I didn't know you were about to reschedule meetings and 50 people have to have emails and all that sort of thing. I just went up and knocked at the door, basically. Uh, and they, uh, they opened the door and I said, I'm here about the Dr. Who thing. <laughs> They looked at me and, and went, uh, one second, and they, they, they ran in and they brought me into the into the boardroom, uh, the Amblin boardroom, and in the corner, in a glass case, uh, was the actual ET ship from from you know the small ship, not the huge thing. The, the, there's a ET's actual ship is like a, a round ball with small. It's quite simple, ET ET ship. And so I looked at this going, and it was all these momentous from these films I'd seen and going. Oh my God, look at this. Uh, and Steven Spielberg's chef came out and said, what would you like for lunch? So they, let me, they had to wait and organize that. So, so I basically surprised them. I wasn't trying to, so I wasn't trying to be funny. I just said, I'm free, I'll go out and say hello. So uh, we never got to the stage of negotiations or anything like that. They, they, they kind of wanted me to sign on for seven years. And again, stupidly, uh, everybody signs up when you're doing a series in America for about five or seven years. So I, I just said, I ain't doing seven, I'll do two. They went, we don't, we don't do two, we do seven. I said, well, I'm not doing it. So, so negotiations didn't go very far because I, I, I get bored quite quickly. So I, I said, I, I don't know what I want to do next week, never mind in seven years' time. So that's, that was kind of to the end. But they showed me loads of books and they tried to do a big sale. And they were delightful people, they were really lovely. But Paul played it, he was really good. So it, 